delight to be on with you tonight, Doug, Joe, and everyone listening. I think you're going to find tonight's a very important and dramatic turnaround in the information that's now flowing. Uh, as you know, Tim Alberino uh, wrote the pretty much the script for our latest True Legends, The Unholy Sea, and lo and behold, within probably one week, Doug, of uh, probably, well, I'd say this, within one week, the world's largest pyramid in the world was found in, hidden inside a mountain in Mexico that the, uh, they're claiming the early settlers built a church on top of a hill, not knowing that the Great Pyramid of Cholulu lay beneath. Now, that's BS, okay? Uh, the, the bottom line is, is that from the beginning of the Spanish conquistadors, uh, pillaging, plundering of the Americas, South America, Latin America, all over the country, they have basically put their churches on every high point in the city to show the conquest of the Catholic faith over the pagan religions. Now, when Tim and I first started talking about this, we basically encountered a lot of people poo-pooing us. But I think it's neat, because we can make statements, and then God gives us the exclamation point. And judging from the response we've been getting on the unholy sea from all over the world, uh, people are saying it puts so many of the pieces together. Now, I find it interesting that this didn't happen two years ago, three years ago, or four years ago. But by the grace of God, his love for his creation, he wants people to know the truth. And by the way, I think God's uh, uh, doing a great job of no longer allowing um, uh, aberrations of specific denominations to obscure the Word of God. I, I say that in the context of there's nothing that's hidden that won't be revealed and made known. So uh, we're going to talk tonight about some of the amazing things, but one of the most amazing things is, and I'm going to turn right over to you, Tim, uh, that is happening in our world is all of the plausible and the former and formal denials of alien life, of planetary, uh, planets that can host human life. Everything that's out there now is coming to the forefront. And I believe, and Tim will share in detail, that we're on the verge of, uh, right now we may be uh, just watching the beginnings of uh, uh, the announcement that the aliens are here and that they created us. They'll move it from the aliens are there to the aliens came here, and pretty much to fit in with their total, total unveiling. So we'd encourage everybody to absolutely watch the trailer and to understand tonight we're not making stuff up. We spend a, a horrific amount of money to go all over all over the world and then to have the best production we can afford at the moment. And Doug, from what you know, Tom Horn said and others have said, this is the best DVD of its kind that they've ever seen. I think you've echoed that. So this is not, you know, uh, a handy cam, uh, a, a mic on the camera, just, you know, cinema verite style. If this is a production that basically weaves the central theme of history that the fallen angels gave to mankind uh, their technology, their understanding of science, and through that arcane, hidden, or occult understanding, as people serve them, has come about this, what I would call, technologically decadent period of uh, techno-serfdom, those are words I coined years ago, that are coming into full fruition. And so now we're seeing everything that's been hidden revealed. And the astonishing thing is, is that it litters the pages now of mainstream uh, news sites, especially when it comes to the supernatural being on Drudge, the London Daily Mail. All over the world, people are experiencing strange anomalies. And somebody said, it's almost like the most evil hand opened Pandora's box, the one that was hidden in the regular box. So go ahead and Tim and take it. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Um, talking about this Cholula pyramid, what's, what I find really interesting about this is that the pyramid was actually discovered in the, uh, in the early 20th century, um, and, but has, is recently appearing all over the news uh, this month, in the month, month or uh, in the month of August, if we're still in the month, month of August. Yes, we are, the 29th. Um, it's it's just exploding all over the internet and all over the news. Uh, even though it's been known 
that people have known about, about this uh, particular pyramid for a while, uh, for uh, a century. And um, it, it's, it literally comes on the heels of, as Steve said, of our production of our last uh, documentary film, which, which deals with exactly the situation that we find at Cholula, at the Pyramid of Cholula in Mexico, which is a pyramid, a very large pyramid. In fact, this is, this is claimed to be the largest pyramid on the planet. It has a base four times larger than the Great Pyramid of Giza and uh, nearly twice its volume. But perched on top of the pyramid is a Catholic church, uh, which uh, in, the, in the Unholy See, uh, we, we detail why it is that the Catholic church, in many cases, uh, will place uh, a cathedral or a monastery or some other kind of religious building on site where these ancient structures are found and literally on top of them uh, uh, sometimes as in the case of Cholula and uh, this pyramid is not only is it the largest uh, structure so this, the, what they say is the largest uh, structure on the planet man-made structure in terms of ancient structures uh, it's also the oldest continuous continuously occupied building on the continent because of the church that's on top of it, uh, which I find to be very interesting. Um, it, this this church was built during the conquest of Mexico, which was basically happening in happening in the, in the same time frame frame more or less of the conquest of Peru. So you have many of the same factors happening in Mexico that were happening in in Peru, in Mexico with Cortez, uh, and in Peru with Pizarro. But these guys were discovering the same things and doing the same things. That, uh, the, the conquistadors in Mexico with Cortes were finding the bones of giants, uh, just like the, uh, the conquistadors <clears throat> that were conquering the Incan Empire in Peru and Bolivia. And uh, in fact, they were communicating with one another, uh, according to the documents that we uncovered. And, and it's a well-known fact that these, con these conquests uh, that they were they were they were cut from the same cloth literally these conquistadors um, and and so giants are being discovered at the same time the bones of giants these pyramids are being discovered and churches are being erected Catholic churches a Catholic presence is being uh, placed directly in these very important archaeological zones uh, just like all the other structures all the other major ancient structures around the world this Cholula Temple pyramid uh, has a an, an extensive underground network below it and inside of it, and just like the other structures, or, um, uh, ancient structures around the world, uh, it's built on top of previous pyramids. So um, it is extremely interesting to me that, as Steve said, we finish our film, the first, uh, the second episode in our documentary film series, The Unholy Sea dealing with this subject matter and then a month later we've got a story running through the press uh, of a pyramid uh, that fits the bill of everything we talked about in our film and not only that also in the month of july uh, a couple of weeks after we released our film or a week after we released our film nasa came out with uh, an image of the surface of mars and uh, i've talked about this extensively uh, in some with Tom Horn and, and uh, with Gary Stearman that that NASA comes out with this picture with the heading Morse code on Mars and uh, of course they 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 created a media frenzy about Morse code on Mars is, is this potential is this a potential communication on Mars and then they they proceeded to to absolutely uh, disqualify the idea that it could be a potential communication from Mars, but nevertheless, the heading, Morse code on Mars, gets plastered all over the world in, um, in the news, in both uh, uh, internet articles and on major news networks, such as Fox News, CNN, CNN, MSNBC, they all carried the story. And I find that to be very interesting because we featured something called the geoglyphs of Tiwanaku in our first film, in episode one, of our true legend series, which 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 uh, which are the geoglyphs are these massive uh, um, 
these massive lines and dots and mounds that are raised over the earth in the Altiplano, in the high plain of Bolivia, but are also uh, engraved into the bedrock. So they're mounds and they're engraved, and they're absolutely massive. And, and you can see those uh, featured in the first film, uh, in the first uh, film of our documentary series in episode one. So it's almost like we're producing these films, we're covering these topics, and then suddenly we're being verified. Uh, uh, our, our research is being verified in real time in the news right after we, we complete these documentaries. So there's definitely something happening. There's, I think that, honestly, I think that we are experiencing uh, what could be described as soft disclosure at this point. I think that uh, very gradually, incrementally, information is being released that, it, it, that is intentionally designed to prime us, to acclimate us to the announcement that's coming in the very near future. Soft disclosure with a spin, though, with their spin, right? Oh, absolutely. All right. Yep. And, and you know, Doug, excuse me a minute. <clears throat> Sorry for my throat. The interesting and the more, I would say, important aspect of this is, as you know, I put out a request twice on your show for someone that was good with math. And, you know, the guys that tried to help me, it the, by their both their confessions, it was beyond their ability. Well, here's what I'm maintaining, and I'm going to say it tonight for the first time I think it's ever been said. I believe that NASA, or NASA, Gary Haven told me NASA's in the Bahamas and NASA's in Florida, uh, the, <laughs> the ability to decipher those, both whether it's Martian landscape or uh, you know the ones that we found in Peru, uh, the the thing that I'm struggling with is how to put this into words because it's so massive in the ramifications. I maintain that, and Tim and I are working on this right now. It was my contention that the language that David Flynn first identified in his book, Sidonia, uh, the Secret Chronicle of Mars, and then later, you know, in his other writings that are available on my website. The thing that's important to keep in mind is if NASA has already deciphered that, then the correlation between what's on Mars and what's on the surface of the Earth uh, in South America, primarily Peru, uh, we're talking about something that is so, uh, how do I say this, beyond mortal comprehension that it will take, here I know what I'm trying to say, it's beyond mortal comprehension, even if they've deciphered it in the, the highest or lowest annals of Luciferianism. The spin will be, Doug, under soft disclosure, that which will turn to hard disclosure, I'm afraid, very soon, is to say that they have deciphered it. Now, because they're the only ones outside the Russians or Chinese or whoever else may have done the same thing, they can put whatever spin on it they would like. And so, you know, by the grace of God, where they've got billions, we've got our knees, and we've got prayers, and we've got intercession. And by the way, I want to make this clear to everybody who's been praying for us. Tim and I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, we talk about this all the time, we know that God is being faithful to answer your prayers, both for our safety and for the steps he's leading us in to get this deciphering. Look, it's, it's true. Tim got what he got from the Holy Ghost. I got what I got from the Holy Ghost. A man has nothing except he receives it from above. But we're being led in a very, I would say this, a totally almost contrarian leading to definitely standard archaeology, standard cosmology, standard everything. In other words, uh, the framework of the false narrative of history is being broken almost on a daily basis. Now, the fact that this is a big, a big pyramid in Cholulu, what most people lose track of prior to the flood of Noah, there were no oceans, okay? There were supercontinents, and all across the world, there were massive pyramids. And what we're going to be presenting to people, and, and part of our next uh, True Legends uh, series, uh, number three, is that if you take out the fact that oceans were only existent after the flood, you can see the continuity of all of the different pyramids from all over the world. In essence, just as in Babylon, they were seeking to have a 
uh, standard language, which, by the way, they're going to achieve very soon, and uh, through universal translation, instantaneous translation understanding, that which the planes of Shinar failed in, uh, the mad Illuminus will succeed in. But that's another uh, story another time. So as we're researching this, what's fascinating is that, you know, uh, 120 million years ago, there was called the map of the creator. I've made that a mention of that before. Uh, it's done on a scale that's pretty interesting, whereas one inch equals 1.1 kilometer. But it directly matches specific areas of the Ural Mountains. If the flood, and we believe, obviously, the Book of Enoch teaches that the fallen angels knew the flood was coming to destroy their progeny. So they wrote in the mountains, they wrote in the sand, they wrote in the land, and they wrote in the stars exactly their testimony of who they are. In essence, they wrote their uh, will and testament to their uh, children uh, produced by, you know, supernatural uh, relationships between fallen angels and earth women. I want to remind everybody, when you're talking about the supernatural, gravity does not apply in the sense you understand it. Physics do not apply in the sense you've been taught it. And your understanding needs to be in a different realm. I have to say this every time I go on your show, because I'll get emails. Don't send them. Don't waste your breath, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus said in heaven they are neither given nor taken in marriage, but are as the angels when confronted by the Pharisees. But we're not talking about heavenly angels. We're talking about fallen angels. And what's becoming more apparent daily is, is that dead things from under the earth are moved at thy coming. Now, I want to share something, Tim. I'll give it right back to you. I, I've, I've been receiving a couple of things from Glinda Lomax. I guess her name is Glinda Laukas now or something. Wings of Prophecy. I'm sorry, Glinda, if I mispronounce your name. But, Doug, this is echoing what Tim and I are, are finding out. The more we go investigating, the more we are seeing the, the gates of hell and the locals or people who are talking to us, contacting us, talking about such amazing supernatural events happening today. Not yesterday, not 10,000 years ago or 10 million years ago. Now, I want to read this because this is, this is something that's very fascinating, very pertinent to what Tim and I are talking about tonight. In the world around us, you in times to come, my people, will see the invisible realm. For those of you who do not see now, this will be frightening. But it is for your good that I, this is God speaking, I shall open your eyes then. Otherwise, would the deception be so great, none of my people would survive at all. The creatures you shall see then are from the pits of hell, where the enemy of your soul reigns. They will attempt to terrify you, but I command you now, fear not. Do not give place to the enemy in this way. You shall fear the Lord your God only, and him only shall you serve. Remember then that the excuse me. Remember when that time arrives that what you are seeing is not anything new, but things that are very ancient. They have always been around you, but you have not always needed to know this was so. In that time, it will be necessary for you to live without being deceived by those who are wolves in sheep's clothing. Fear not only, believe in me, I am well able to protect you. Now that was number one. Number two came today. Once dead. And this is where it gets exactly into what uh, the Lord is leading to us, uh, Tim and I, and Genesis 6 Productions. My children, in the end, things which were once dead shall live again. I do not wish uh, for this to terrify you, but it has been foretold in my word. In the end, there shall be only chaos and death and destruction shall reign all around you. This has been the enemy's intent all along, and his desire is getting you into sin, that you would destroy your own souls and lead those around you into temptation. He is coming to destroy in the earth, and there shall indeed be much destruction. But in the end, my Father shall prevent him from destroying all. I tell you this, that you may know it before it happens. Fear not. The things we're presenting to people through true legends and through the myths associated with them, and through the archaeological and the ancient architecture, are at this point in history. And I want to remind everybody, the dead, once dead, that word comes from Rafa, from which derives the word Rephaim. Rephaim is the giants. Nephilim are the fallen angel, even though twice in the Old Testament, 
It is translated giant. It should more correctly state those who descend from the fallen ones. So you've got Genesis chapter 6, obviously the name of our production company, and you have Numbers 1333. There seems to be a lapse in ability for people to understand that Satan just didn't do this once, trying to genetically destroy the human race, but he did it twice, both before and after the flood. And now he's doing it a third time throughout the secret and arcane laboratories throughout the world. So basically, uh, we're now seeing, if you will, the unveiling of all things. And years ago, Doug, and I don't have a copy, I'm sorry, but I gave a prophecy, I think 15 years ago, that the unseen world would become visible, that the things of men's nightmares that only terrified them in their dreams will now terrify them in their lives. And, you know, it went on, and, and forgive me, but those are the only two things I can remember from 15 years ago. We're at this point now in history where those things that we're taking people through true legends are, I believe, the antidote for fear that is soon to overcome the whole earth. And when people are afraid and somebody comes as a celestial savior, not Jesus Christ, they're going to buy the lie and end up in eternity without Jesus. So that's why what we do, uh, that's why we do what we do. Uh, Tim, go ahead. Um, I think it's... Uh... It's interesting also how the Internet has uh, accelerated. Uh, I think it's accelerated some of the some of the plans of, of the Luciferian elite because uh, people are able to uh, share knowledge and are able to obviously, for example, a wider range of people are able to hear us tonight uh, and and uh, access our the films that we make and the videos that we produce and and the books that Steve writes and and so knowledge is increasing and so rather than trying to put a lid on it i think what uh, what we're seeing is an acceleration of the plan uh, they're trying to stay ahead of it and when i say they i mean the 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 the, the priests of power the luciferian elite uh, the controllers of society and of ancient history the knowledge of ancient history uh and i think that before long it's it's only a matter of time before uh, the revelation happens before it occurs uh, to people that many of the very large pyramidal mountains around them are actually structures, are actually uh, man-made structures. I don't think they're Tim. necessarily man-made. Basically, put their churches on every high point in the city to show the conquest of the Catholic faith over the pagan religions. Now, when Tim and I first started talking about this, we basically encountered a lot of people poo-pooing us. But I think it's neat, because we can make statements, and then God gives us the exclamation point. And judging from the response we've been getting on the unholy sea from all over the world, uh, people are saying it puts so many of the pieces together. Now, I find it interesting that this didn't happen two years ago, three years ago, or four years ago. But by the grace of God, his love for his creation, he wants people to know the truth. And by the way, I think God's uh, uh, doing a great job of no longer allowing... Um, uh, aberrations of specific do denominations to obscure the Word of God. I, I say that in the context of there's nothing that's hidden that won't be revealed and made known. So uh, we're going to talk tonight about some of the amazing things, but one of the most amazing things is, and I'm going to turn right over to you, Tim, uh, that is happening in our world is all of the plausible and the former and formal denials of alien life, of planetary, uh, planets that can host human life. Everything that's out there now is coming to the forefront. And I believe, and Tim will share in detail, that we're on the verge of, uh, right now we may be uh, just watching the beginnings of uh, uh, the announcement that the aliens are here and that they created us. They'll move it from the aliens are there to the aliens came here and pretty much pyramid what's what i find really interesting about this is that the pyramid was actually discovered in the uh in the early 20th century um and but has is recently appearing all over the news uh this month in the month month or uh 
in the month of August, if we're still in the month month of August. Yes, we are, the 29th. Um, it's, it's just exploding all over the Internet and all over the news. Uh, even though it's been known, uh, people have known about, about this uh, particular pyramid for a while, uh, for uh, a century. And um, it, it's, it literally comes on the heels of, as Steve said, of our production of our last uh, documentary film, which, which deals with exactly the situation that we find at Cholula, at the Pyramid of Cholula in Mexico, which is a pyramid. A very large pyramid. In fact, this is this is claimed to be the largest pyramid on the planet. It has a base four times larger than the Great Pyramid of Giza, and uh, nearly twice its volume. But perched on top of the pyramid is a Catholic church, uh, which uh, in the in the unholy sea uh, we we detail why it is that the Catholic Church, in many cases, uh, will place. Uh, a cathedral or a monastery or some other kind of religious building on site where these ancient structures are found and literally on top of them, uh, uh, sometimes as in the case of Cholula. And uh, this pyramid is, not only is it the largest uh, structure... To fit in with their total, total unveiling. So we'd encourage everybody to absolutely watch the trailer and to understand tonight, we're not making stuff up. We spend a, a horrific amount of money to go all over all over the world, and then to have the best production we can afford at the moment. And Doug, from what you know, Tom Horn said, and others have said, this is the best DVD of its kind that they've ever seen. I think you've echoed that. So this is not, you know, uh, a handy cam, uh, a, a mic on the camera, just you know, cinema verite style. Yeah, this is a production that basically weaves the central theme of history that the fallen angels gave to mankind uh, their technology, their understanding of science, and through that arcane, hidden, or occult understanding, as people serve them, has come about this, what I would call, technologically decadent period of uh, techno-serfdom, those are words I coined years ago, that are coming into full fruition. And so now we're seeing everything that's been hidden revealed, and the astonishing thing is is that it litters the pages now of mainstream uh, news sites, especially when it comes to the supernatural being on Drudge, the London Daily Mail. All over the world, people are experiencing strange anomalies. And somebody said, it's almost like the most evil hand opened Pandora's box, the one that was hidden in the regular box. So go ahead, and Tim, and take it. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Um, talking about this Cholula What they say is the largest uh, structure on the planet, man-made structure in terms of ancient structures. Uh, it's also 
the oldest continuous, continuously occupied building on the continent because of the church that's on top of it, uh, which I find to be very interesting. Um, it, this, this church was built during the conquest of Mexico, which was basically happening in, happening in, the, in the same time frame, frame, more or less, of the conquest of Peru. So you have many of the same factors happening in Mexico that were happening in, in Peru. In Mexico with Cortez, uh, and in Peru with Pizarro. But these guys were discovering the same things and doing the same things. That, uh, the the conquistadors in Mexico with Cortez were finding the bones of giants, uh, just like the uh, the conquistadors <clears throat> that were conquering the Incan Empire in Peru and Bolivia. And uh, in fact, they were communicating with one another, uh, according to the documents that we uncovered. And, and it's a well known fact that these con these conquests. Uh, that they were they were they were cut from the same cloth literally these conquistadors um, and and so giants are being discovered at the same time the bones of giants these pyramids are being discovered and churches are being erected Catholic churches a Catholic presence is being uh, placed directly in these very important archaeological zones uh, just like all the other structures all the other major ancient structures around the world this Cholula Temple Pyramid uh, has a an, an extensive underground network below it, 